going to do it one day. Could it be today and the rest of this championship? I wonder. What a task. He has, in fact, uh, played Steve Davis on uh, quite a few times. I think it's five in all. He's never beaten him. And the opening frame of their match wasn't really a whirlwind affair, as you might imagine. Let's join the match. It's in progress. First frame. Davis is behind. There he is, 28 to 37. And you'll hear commentary from Ray Edmonds and Ted Lowe. Opening frame. Confesses he touched the uh, the uh, cue ball with the tip of his cue. Len Ganley hadn't seen it, and uh, it's uh, what usually happens between the professionals. They're all great sportsmen in these tournaments, even though there's a lot of money at stake. But it could have worked in Steve's favour in a peculiar sort of way. better than Steve Davis that the first match in the World Championship is a very tough hurdle to overcome. Just one red left now and he's 12 points adrift at the moment. Yes, it's not the problem of potting the green, or the blue for that matter, Ted. He knows that he's going to have to move this safe red, and uh, he can't dislodge it off either of those colours. So it looks as if he's considering dropping the cue ball behind the yellow. Deep Davis, one. Well, deep thinking as ever. He knows now that Eddie Charlton has got to move that red. This looks like a cracker. <laughs> Applauded by Steve as he comes to the table. <laughs> Left hand side on the cue ball to take it around the black. difficult to know where the cue ball or, or indeed the object ball is going to finish when you play those shots and on this occasion he's left an opportunity for the Australian. What? Well Eddie 
13 points in front, as you see. The blue would make it 18, but uh, hasn't got a good positional shot onto the yellow. So I think he'll just take the five points and try and play a good safety shot. This one's not easy, but uh, we've seen Steve pot balls like this many times before. That's cruel. Well, would you believe it, Ted? I was looking at Steve's face before he took that shot, and there was a wry smile on his face. He looked at the middle pocket. He knew it was a possibility. If he'd have played it, of course, he couldn't get it, but uh, that could well have cost him this first frame. Charlton wants two balls. There's a let off. He's certainly not going to be happy about that. Yes, the only thing in uh, Eddie's favour here is that the Brown's not too well situated, but. Uh... pink and black the pink is potable to the right corner but uh, he'll do exceptionally well to get good position on the black depends on this black. Uh 
one purely defensive shot from Eddie. It's given uh, Steve Davis a chance of pulling him in trouble, but it's still wanting a very good shot. Eddie managing to keep the black very close to the cushion. asking Len Ganley to uh, clean the black ball. As you can see, that cue ball is right underneath the cushion. It's a chance, but uh, could be dangerous. Certainly not easy when you can only hit part of the cue ball. Oh, that's a shot. He will be thankful about that. Australian Eddie Charlton takes the first of our 19 frames. Close one, took nearly 40 minutes. I think Dave is quite happy to be in there to get the feel of it all again. And nobody ever hurries steady Eddie. The second is in progress and uh, just a few balls down. It's Davis at the table. There's the score. One stray red at the top rail. Yes, all reds are covered. Coming off the top cushion, I imagine, uh, very steadily into the pack. Too steady. A lovely pot that. quite as nice as it might have been. The red to the left corner is a little bit tricky. And uh, if the one goes past the pink to the middle, that's the one it'll take on. A consolation prize, the cue ball touching the blue, so he can just play away from it, having nominated it.
Well, I think we'll Steve, see Steve having a go at the one in the middle. It doesn't look too difficult, just drop on the pink, but... Uh, no, again, he's not taking any chances, and it's a rather subdued Steve Davis this morning so far. the big sixer last October and the mince pies aren't as good as they used to be. That one played 21. absolutely perfectly. And Steve Davis now, every chance to clinch this second frame from this. 36. He's glanced at the scoreboard, knows he's safe. Sixty. 
54 points ahead now with only 43 points there. 44. A few moments ago, Ted Steve was making the game look a little difficult, but now he's making it look very easy. This is uh, pretty good stuff, even by his standards. of 60 makes the match square at one frame each. Flavour of the champion there, getting into his stride, one frame each. Davis and Charlton, remember it's the best of 19, they have a possible 10 to play tonight to reach a finish. Also playing today is the man Davis beat in the final last year, John Parrott. He's playing Mark Bennett, and we'll switch across to their match and have a look at them. John Parrott. This time, Steve Davis against Eddie Charlton, who's been in a couple of finals and quite a lot of semi-finals as well. Well, Davis lost the opening frame, but then pulled back to 3-1. The next, he went to 4-1, and frame six became very interesting indeed. In frame six, Davis had a break of 39. We're going to join it with Charlton in the lead, just by 49 to 44. There are only four colours left, and Davis looking a bit quizzical. Oh, what's happened here? And Len Ganley having a good look at this could be a free ball. One has to hit both sides of the object ball. It's one of the situations here, though, Ted, where I don't think it's too vital. It is a free ball, but uh, no advantage to Steve. There's no colour on to nominate as a free ball. So he's nominating the brown, which one has to, even though it's the ball on. In a free ball situation, you must do that. After a long study here, Ted, you know, he might even change his mind and let uh, Eddie have another go because it's pretty awkward, this.
I think Steve might have a go at this one. So just blue and pink required. Worst place to leave the cue ball, Ted. Absolutely in line with the pink, it makes it a fine cut. Yes. <laughs> Eddie Charlton then is going to be disappointed at losing that frame, but Steve Davis is halfway home, leading five frames to one. Indeed, remember it's the first man to 10 in these first round matches. Well, Davis really got going in the next. He had breaks of 38 and 38 to take it 6-1. Here's the next, and Charlton's really got to do something now, and he's ahead, two reds left. Davis to get well and truly back in this frame. 27 points behind, but uh, every chance of a couple of reds and big colours. to be right behind this one straight I think it's still one he must take on but uh, it's no easy shot I think it's back to the safety again now. Seventeen points then. The difference between the two of them.
And I think the uh, green will go across the table into the middle. Steve looking at the position for the brown. He's misjudged his position on the brown. May just be able to make it. want the contact on the blue but uh, should be able to put the blue on the, the ball cushion and the white down this end of the table behind uh, the black I would think And he should be playing this off two cushions, the side and uh, ball cushion to come at the blue from that <coughs> angle. That way he would uh, have less chance of leaving it on if he missed it. But of course he's should have judged it to leave the cue ball the other side of the blue. And what's more, Ray, He's given the advantage over to the world champion. Steve only wants two of these three balls now. That one got away. So a chance for the Australian to pull this frame. He won the first frame in this match and then has lost the next six. Oh, that's unbelievable. <laughs> I just hate to repeat what he was saying there. Just wants the pink now, then. It's there. Yes. This eighth frame has taken 61 minutes. And finally, Steve Davis pulls it over the bag to lead seven frames to one. Eddie, the old fighter, but throwing frames away, and as Ted Lowe said, it took so long, 61 minutes, they couldn't finish the session, so that's how they've ended up at that stage, 7-1. So here's the state of the game here on day one of the championship, with Davis leading Charlton 7-1, you need 10 to win. <laughs> Well, what 
whatever you think about him, either on or off the table, it's difficult to ignore him. Alex Higgins on the opening day of this year's Embassy World Professional Snooker Championship, making sure that nobody missed his entry into the fray for the 18th time in 19 years. He just missed out last year. Twice the champion. He's absolutely sure he's going to win it again this time. We shall see, and we shall see his first match here in this programme. But there are 31 other players here as well in the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield. Let me tell you what's been happening on day one. And Dean Reynolds is playing Peter Francisco of South Africa at the end of their first session. Reynolds leading 6-3. You need to win 10 to go through in the best of 19 first round matches. John Parrott, the European Open champion and last year's beaten finalist, he lost to Steve Davis, a frame down at the end of his first session to Mark Bennett of Wales, 5-4. We're going to see that match to a finish in this programme, and I can promise you some very entertaining snooker indeed. And the defending champion, the man who's done it six times before, having lost the first frame to the Australian veteran Eddie Charlton, didn't lose anything after that, and went to 7-1. It was either Steady Eddie or Steady Steve making a long affair, and only eight of the scheduled nine frames were played in that first session. So they resumed tonight, and when they played the next one, frame nine, it became, as Davis might say, a very interesting frame indeed. Ray Edmonds and Ted Lowe are commentating. It's in progress. This is Davis. He's got 16 points on the board already. And that's another excellent pot there from Steve. And looking pretty sharp tonight. 14. Already 30 points in front. Steve quite happy to settle for one of the small fry and nicely angled to get back into the reds here. Twenty-six. 
That's a nice one, just kissing that red out of the way. 33. Steve certainly looking very sharp and he seems to be extending his stance a little more. He, he rather got close and tied up I thought but uh, he's back to more his old style. Perhaps he's thought about it. Sixty-six points in front, just the blue required to leave Eddie needing snookers. And there you see the feet well spread, a nicely extended body. Fifty-five. chance now for Steve to get his name on the break board. Seventy-one. Yes, Jack, and he's certainly not wasting any time at all tonight. Seventy-two. So the highest break of the match so far, and this could be the highest break of the tournament so far at Sheffield. is certainly uh, a little bit of uh, Steve Davis that we're used to seeing playing like the world champion that he is. 96. gets this, 118. So 118 is set as the highest break to date, and Steve Davis takes the frame to lead by eight frames to one.
Joan Spencer and Jack Carnham enjoying that as much, I think, as Steve Davis did as they sent their first century break of the championship. 53 minutes later, Davis had got it 10 frames to one. He was over the first hurdle, facing the press, just as if he'd got a scriptwriter. Well, I've, been, well, I've been able to sort of produce uh, good stuff when needed, but, um, you know, you need it in the World Championships. So, you know, you, you really want to go... It's like the guy who's... Uh, who's, who's the, the train doesn't stop at his station, and the only way he can possibly uh, get off is to start running and have somebody hold him out. And really, you should be running from the moment you hit the crucible, because uh, if you get off to a bad start, you're out and you're on your way home the first day. So, um, if, even though it's nice to build up and say, oh, I've got through a tough first one, um, it's nice to play well and uh, you're into it. So, uh, I've had a good day today, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the game, still in the tournament, and uh, pretty impressive on my part. In the funny sort of way, 